hang up and try again. Hi, everybody. Welcome back. So today we're going to talk about uh, two specific methods of the implementation of linked lists. One of them is add and the other one is remove. They're not the same one that we discussed in previous lessons or different videos. This one allows us to use what we call a predecessor. Remember that when we have a linked list, we have the first and then we have the last one. They're both nodes and that allows us to perform operations like finding or find the size or add and remove. Usually we add it at the end and we remove it also at the first of the end, right? So we need to recognize a notion of the predecessor in order to make the connection between one node to another node. The reason is because if we don't make this connection, or at least we don't anticipate the next connection from the node, we might lose the entire uh, list or the rest of the list, and that can be critical. So we're going to create a that method in this lesson, and then we're going to discuss about the trade-offs of those um, methods. Also, um, towards the end of this chapter, and probably you already have this or have seen this before, we're going to talk about collections. Collections is a different library. As a matter of fact, in this course, we usually teach you how to build the data structures with specific methods and whatnot. The secret is that most of those data structures already exist in a collections library. So we try not to tell you this at the very beginning, although probably many of the books they explain it to you, but uh, there's libraries in Java that basically uh, permit to have or access a lot of data structures. That includes lists, and in particular, they have linked lists and array lists, and they have something called sets or hash sets, and they have other different data structures that we're going to talk about towards the end of this uh, course or to the beginning of a course called data structures. So let's go ahead and, and describe these items in this lesson. Hi, everybody. Welcome to the lesson of linked lists. Uh, today, we're going to talk about selected methods, including the add and the remove for the linked list. And we're also going to talk about the collection library. This library is important for many developers because most of the ideas behind the data structures and algorithms, they're already been implemented in this library called collections. So we're going to go ahead and discuss a couple of these items today. First of all, I would like to basically illustrate this method called add. As you can see here in this piece of code, the add method is very, um, it takes two things, right? The index where you want to add it, and they're also the value uh, that you want to add. If you notice here, I'm emulating a linked list, as you can see in this image, in this figure, where you have a start and you have also an last. So basically, the method call is this what you can see here in this square when you have the input. Here we're calling add with the value c that we would like to store it at position 0. And you can see here the method, the whole screenshot that I did for the method on code. So here we're going to trace the value. For example, when you want to add an element, for example, if we are interested to add the value c at position 0, that is very simple. It's basically is the very first case. Well, it shouldn't be called the first case. The very first thing you have to do is to, when you call this method, check, right? We The first thing we need to check is in case the user gives us the correct bounds. What does that mean? It means that the user didn't give us any negative value or more an index that doesn't exist, which means more of the size that we have. Notice that here we're checking whether if the value is smaller than zero or greater than the current size. In this case, we have five values. If that is the case, then we're going to complain by throwing an index out of bounds exception. Okay, that's basically the pretty basic uh, situation of validating the information that we give. Now, let's go to the very first case. In case this is not true, then there's no problem. Here, the only thing that we're checking is the conditions that are true because of the or. So we're going to jump directly to adding to position zero, which has happened to what we're doing right now. 
If an index is a position zero, then sure thing, we basically, we're gonna create a node like what we're looking right now, but notice that we're using the second constructor, the one that it takes a value E, which is, is the element we want to add, which takes the string C, but also gives you the index. Now, I want you to pay attention in the second argument, which is first. If you remember the second argument in the constructor, it will be pointing to whoever the pointing first is pointing to. That will make the connection. So this piece of code is very important because you're gonna create a new node with the value C uh, inside, that's a string, and the dot next will be pointing to whoever first is pointing to. In this case, will be the node at position zero. So once we do this, ladies and gentlemen, then C will point into the same as first. The remaining thing we have to do is to update our first. And this is what's happening right now. First gets updated based on this information. This is what happens and the left hand side of the equal signs. This is where we assigned. Notice that we start from right to left, right? Because that's the way is being assigned from right to left every time. The next part is if we check in, in case we add it actually in the very last element. This means that before adding the element C, the list was empty, right? And that means that the last is also pointing to the null. So if that was the case, then we need to re this redirect last to the first. This is only in case it was empty, okay? Sometimes it can be true, sometimes it cannot be true. Now, the next line, which is the return, that only tell us the, to get out, right? So when you see a statement like return semicolon, it really means void, right? Return the void. And you can pay attention right now, this is a void method. So basically this means return the void because there's nothing else we should do in this situation. So how about if it's not only in the very first one? So this is where the interesting thing comes into place. So in case we want to add, for example, the letter C, right? The string C at position four, we need to figure out first if this is true, we're gonna skip directly to the next if statement, which is not true. And also we're not planning to add it at position four. So here we're gonna inspect this part since you can see here, when, when I hit enter, we try to go somewhere in the middle of the list. Now, this node, P, it's, it's basically a dummy variable, right? And this is only help us to go and iterate to, or to navigate through the entire list. Remember that we're going to start that first, and then we're going to go and iterate through the entire list. And this is what's happening with this for loop. Notice that we start at position one because we know it's not at position zero because otherwise we could address whatever is in line eight. Then we're going to go all the way to index minus one, one by one, and we're going to move forward through p gets p dot next. This is our, the way we're going to move forward to that. This, ladies and gentlemen, is what we call a predecessor. Pre means before, the decessor of someone who wants to add. So the predecessor helps us as a routine to basically allows us to move forward in order to make the connection. I'm going to come back to this code in a little bit. But basically what we're doing here, we're going to create this dummy called P that will point to the first. And then we're going to check, we're going to have this counter to one, right? Because of the same reason that I told you, we already, we're going to start, we know it's not going to be a zero. And we're going to keep checking if it's less than, uh, or equal to the index minus one, which is three, which is true, then we're gonna move p dot next. So here this allows us to go to the next value, which is this guy. So after that thing, we're gonna increase k plus plus, that give us a new value for k, which is two. And then we're gonna go back to this condition, which remains two, because is two less than or equal to three, that is true. So that will be to the next step of p.next. p.next move us to the next node, and then we're gonna move to the k plus plus, that will give us a k to three. Then we're gonna check if three is less than or equal to three, which also is true. And then finally, we're gonna move to the p.next. At this point, ladies and gentlemen, we're gonna, we still have to add k plus plus, but notice that the predecessor, yeah, that's what the P stands for, is going to be just before of the cut. Remember that we want to add the string C at position four. And what we're doing here is we're going before. So in this case, it's three. 
So now we are in that position just about to add the element. Let me just conclude this loop, which is increment the K plus plus. Now it's four. The next time we execute this condition is not going to be true because four is not less than or equal to three. So this is not true. So at this point, this condition is not true. It's not validated. We're going to move to the next line of code, which is this one. Now here, I don't know if you already identify what's happening here. So here we're going to create another node. This node contains, we're using the second constructor. It takes E as the element that we want to add. In this case, it's going to be the string C. But the p.next, I want you to pay attention that this guy, the p.next, is going to be the element that we're going to go just before the cut. And this is where we're going to point to this value right here. Yeah, you can see, let me just zoom out real quick p.next is this guy. So in the in the piece of code that we're doing here, we are linking linking the, the actual new node that we have to the p.next. So here, this is the p.next, what I'm highlighting here, and it represents everything that has been highlighted on line 20 of your code. So here, everything that we have is going to be assigned to p.next. So here, what we're going to do, we're going to create a p.next that we just create. And then we're going to reroute it by using this part. p.next is going to be updated through that new node. This guy is p.next. Update it. We're going to break this line and we're going to move it to here. Okay. That line of code is critical, ladies and gentlemen, because if we don't make this connection, then we can lose the rest of the list. And this is a very important aspect in linked list. So please pay attention to this item. And, and, and please remember that the predecessor helps us to make this kind of connectivity. Remember that in other versions of linked list, we just add it to the end, but maybe we want to customize the adding. Maybe we just want to add it in the middle or in a different index that is not the very last one. So here's this is what we're doing right now. We identify the predecessor and then we establish the connection. Now we can actually uh, clean it up and it looks something like this. We already have the element that is a position four. We just uh, Reenumerate that part in order to have now we have six elements. So here is the six. Now, the very last part, ladies and gentlemen, this is only in case we try to we add it at the very end. That means that p.next.next that next is the null. That only means one thing that we add it at the very end. So the index that we're trying to add it happens to be the size, right? In this case, it's not the case, so we don't have to do the last part with last is going to get p.next. So here we're fine with this, and that's it. We conclude this part, which is not this part. Yeah. So this is where I'm explaining right now. This is in the case when the added element happens to be the very last one, which is not true. We're going to make a demo real quick on this item. So I just want you to, to let you know about this. I'm going to use my linked list, uh, Java and my linked list tester, Java where I'm going to implement these items. So today we're going to continue with some selected methods in linked list. Uh, last time we discussed a, a couple of structures for this linked list. As a matter of fact, you probably remember the class node that help us as a container or as a placeholder uh, for to store information. Here we can see the declaration of the class node where we have the value and the next. So we have one constructor, two constructors. The very first constructor, you only provide the value, which you initialize the current value that we store right now. We're holding strings, but Eventually, you can change this for any data type that you want, integers, double. And eventually, we're going to see that this can be become generic type. But we'll see this or we'll have this discussion later on. And the dot next will be the null. That means that you don't have any connection whatsoever. Also, in, the, in this constructor, the node, you also provide the value, but also you provide the reference to the next connection. So this constructor of node, it will play an enormous role in the implementation of today's method because we're not only going to create the node containing that value, but also we're going to provide a reference word to connect it to the next 
um, value of the note. Notice that here I'm using value. You can probably have seen, depending on the book that you're using or depending on the platform that you are actually implementing, some people they use here data. Yeah, that's I have seen that's a, as a data or value or other name, right? Just don't get confused. Value refers to the content that you want to store in this note and eventually in a link list. I have a tester here. Do we actually just testing a couple of these methods? Notice that we're testing the add and also the is empty. And we did a couple of exercises just to access the the first value and the and the last value. So you're welcome to continue testing this part, the size, for example. But today we're going to talk about, in particular, two methods, the add and the remove. So the add and the remove, we already talked about one particular add last time. So this is the add, this very simple add. You provide a value S and you add it towards the end. Well, unless it's empty, then yes, the first one and the last one will be the same, which is the new note containing that. But if not, you always add it towards the end. So we're going to add uh, another method add uh, basically performs. So you're going to receive two arguments and I'm going to create it just after this method. So notice that here we're creating a method called add. It's a void method. Basically, this will take two arguments, a index and also the element that we want to store here. Here I put S, here E, we can call it whatever you want. I just put E for element, but you can call it whatever you want. So the only difference here is we provided index. So the very first thing that we need to do, ladies and gentlemen, is to check for the boundaries. So some people might give you probably a value and index that may be inside or outside of the bounds of this list. So you need to be very careful in order to avoid exception. For that, we need to check if the boundaries, for example, if the index happens to be less than zero, this is for negative values. Or if the index happens to be greater than our current list, right, that size. So here, in case we're just trying to go over the size that we have, we need to complain. And how do we complain? We complain by using a throw, new, and we can just call directly the, the exception index out of bounds exception. Notice that here is suggesting to provide this index out of bounds, but also sometimes it's important to say what's what's what provoke this exception. And there's different ways to do it. I'm going to show you a trick. So here we can just provide the index that we're providing that you transform it into a string. Yeah, this is just a hack in order to do just the, the string value of our value index. So in other words, once you have uh, an element, you need to check the boundaries. If it's not negative, which is in this case, or if, it's, if it exceeds the total number of elements that we have. Now, after checking or validating if we receive the correct data, we need to check if it happens to be that we want to add it at position zero. So add at position zero. Now, if it's at position zero, there might be a couple of situations. Remember that in the other previous ad was we check if it's empty. If it's empty, no problem. We just create the first and the last to that node. But here we may or we might not be empty. So you need to be very careful. As we already discussed in the lecture part, first of all, we need to check if the index is zero. If it's zero, then we need to make sure we add it to the very beginning in the index zero. Now, we need to be very careful with this situation because indeed we need to create uh, a new node, yeah, and equals new node. Now, when we create the new node, we, of course, we want to pass the string S that we want to add it, but also I need you to be very careful because remember that we have in the constructor node two constructors, right? This one's. So we're going to pick the second constructor at this point. Why? Because remember that we want to insert in position zero, but we already know who is at position zero, which is first. So we're going to use this constructor that we're looking right here in order to not only provide the value S that we want to add, but also we want to pass the reference, which is the dot next. So here we're going to insert it in position zero and who 
owns position zero. Right now is the first. So here, now we establish that connection. If you probably remember from the lecture, we're doing this. So here, we just, first of all, we connect that value. Now, once we connect that value, now it's time to reroute. In other words, we need to refresh our no, a new first. For that, we need to do first is the actual value of the node n, the one that we just create. That is what's happening at this point. So now we have in this situation where we connect, actually we reroute the first to this very beginning. Now, it might happen that at the very beginning, when we're trying to add it, the list was empty. It, it only means one thing. So may, we're still in the, in the index at position zero, but it might happen that at the very beginning, the last, it was exactly the same as the null. So if that's the case, that only means that we need to update our last because our last will be the same as the first. And we have done something like this before. If you remember in the, in the first add that we talked last time, if it was empty, the first is the same as the last, is the same as the new node that we want to create. It's very similar for what we were doing right here. So if it happens to be that the last is equal to null, then just assign last equals to the first. Now, when we're done with this case, ladies and gentlemen, notice that this method is a void method. So that means that we're done with this method. There's nothing else that we should be doing at this point. So what we need to do immediately after we're done with the situation, we need to leave. That means that we need to return semicolon. The return semicolon means return the void. So this is get out, this return the nothing, return the void. In other words, this is just an, an emergency exit just to make sure you're done here and you, it's time to leave. So at this point, we, we're done with this case and we probably need to do another case that we want to add somewhere else. Add somewhere else. That means it can be position one, two, three, all the way to even side. So this is a sensitive case because if you remember the lecture, the what we discussed is that we need to be careful when we need to do the rerouting. So this is called a linked list. So the linked list basically reroutes everything that goes from one point to another point. If we're not careful, we can lose the rest of our list. So for that, we need a predecessor. The predecessor has to be just before the element that we want to insert or add, or eventually we're going to talk about remove, that we want to remove. So this is very, very important to have a predecessor. For that, we need a dummy. That's where we create a node predecessor and we need to start at first now here the only thing that we're doing is this dummy is going to help us to go all the way until just before the point to we're going to cut and we're going to do it right now now when we need to stop so for that we need a for loop that we're going to go i'm going to call it k just for you can identify there's a different kind of variable here that we're going to initialize it to one why one because we know for sure is not going to be zero. We are, if it was zero, we already address it in this case. So here we just need to make sure if K is less than or equal to the index we want to insert minus one. So we want to make sure just before the index we want to insert it, we need to find out that position. And what we need to do in the meanwhile, very simple. Predecessor has to move forward by predecessor.next. So in other words, this for loop only helps us to put the predecessor just before the element that we want to insert, like this. Now, once we are just about to insert it, what we need to do, so here is when we need to reroute the link, right? So how are we going to do this? Can you see this p.next? This p.next has to be connected to the next element that we want to add. But for, of course, first of all, we need to create a new node containing the element S that we want to add. And also here is when we need to connect where you want it to be connected. Here is when we need to use the p.next because that will be the link that we're going to point to. Now, once you make this connection, exactly this connection, we just need to reroute the other connection, which is p.next. So p.next will be updated by the creation of the new node, <laughs> which contains the value s and p.next. Okay, here is the rerouting, very important 
very important concept. So here, is, this line is critical, ladies and gentlemen, because this line is the responsible to establish that connection and then reroute it and then update this guy. So be careful with that. Make sure you have this line. Otherwise, you can lose your entire connection of the list if you don't have that. Now, similar to what we did in, uh, in the other case, we need to make sure if we add it at the end. And how are we going to make sure we add it at the end? So we can check, right? If the p.next that next happens to be null, that means that we just add it at the very end. And, and that's something that we need to be careful. I just noticed that I got confused here with P is Pret, right? Since it's not P, it's, it's Pret is in the image. Here is Pret. So, yeah, sorry about that. So, here is the only thing that I was, I was just to, I, I was aberbating that thing in the, in the image that we can have here. But in reality, we call it Pret. So, if the Pret that next, that next is equal to the null, then that only means one thing, that we add it at the end. So here, we need to update our last to be the p.next. So once we have this part, we address all the possible cases. So again, let me just rephrase what we did. The very first if statement is only to validate the indexing. Yeah, indexing of the values, just to make sure the user didn't give you a negative value or a big, huge number. You only, you only have like three values. This will protect you to actually crash. The second case is when you want to add it at position zero. If you want to add it at position zero, you just need to create a new node and then route it to the first. And then finally, reroute it to here. And as a matter of fact, I'm not so sure if you notice, I'm here having a, I can do this. I can simplify this in one line of code. So I'm here creating a node, but thus you can use the power of Java by creating instances with the new and uh, the new node like that. So here we can do it first gets this new node with these two parameters and you don't need this line. So that's a shortcut. You probably have seen this in the past. I just wanted to elaborate on that. If it happens to be that list was empty before, then we just need to update our last to the first. And finally, return semicolon means return the void, which means that you don't have nothing to do anything else in this method. The next case is if you want to add it somewhere between one and size. This is what you have to do. You need to create a predecessor, which is responsible to go in one position just before we make the connection. We start at position one because there's no need to start at position zero. We move forward with predecessor equals to predecessor and dot next. And finally, we reroute it like this way. Finally, we just make sure we don't add it to the end. If we decide to add it to the end, that means that the last was never actually initialized. It was null. That means that we need to update our current last. Those are the, the cases when you have an adding, when you provide an index, or you, and you provide the string. In comparisons with the other add, Remember that it was very simple because here we don't that we don't really have to worry about the entire uh, list. We just add it towards the end, as you can see right here. We just add it to the end. We just update our last. But here it's a little bit more different. Here we need to worry about the the boundaries. We just have to add uh, worry if it's a uh, position zero, and we just have to worry about the rest. So the next method that we want to create is called remove. So the signature of this method looks like this. We're going to return a string. It's very important to have uh, a feedback. So always make the habit to have a feedback when you remove it. Um, this will help a lot, a lot of, on your practices of programming. Now we're providing an index which represents the index that we want to remove. There's a variation of this remove, and I encourage you to watch another video that I present this one, or it's in your book, or it's in a different resources when you provide the string that you want to remove. And is that the case? We're gonna change this by a Boolean statement. But here, since we want to give an index, we wanna make sure we, re we remove the index value that represents the value index. So here, we, we're claiming that we need to, to have a string. We need to have string. And we cannot call here red or answer. So why null here? So null is the default value for all the objects that you probably already know. And string is an object. Therefore, it's a good default value that we provide just to make sure that we give back a 
object, but in case we didn't find the remove, then null is the correct value. This is a null value. After that, it won't hurt to validate. Similar to what we did with the add. Here is when we check if the index is not less than zero, in other words, negative value, or if your index is not greater than your actual size. So remember that we have a method size somewhere here in this class. I think it's right here. Yeah. So we have it right there. So just to make sure we have that. So we can throw a new uh, index out of bounds exception, right? And here what we can do like we did last time, which is just the index that we provide, we transform it into a string and just to concatenate it with the index out of bound exception. You can customize this if you want to, but I think it's just normal to have it like that. Now we have now the cases. What are the cases that we have to deal with? Well, the very first case is in case we want to remove to actually the index, it happens to be zero. That means the very first one. If we want to remove the very first element, what can we do? Read, right, which is the return that we're going to have. It's very easy, right? It's only the first dot value. Remember that here we're extracting just the value of the note. So we're ready to, to give it back, right? But the only thing here is that we need to move to the next. We need to update our first, remember. So the first is very easy. It's just first dot next. And this way, we're just going to update it to the next available one just to have the new first ready for next time. So at this point, when we get out of this if statement, we can just simply go to the return red, which has already been initialized, it, and then we just give back the string as a feedback. That's in case we want to remove the very first one. Now, how about we want to remove something else? Like, for example, anything that is from position one all the way to size. Here's when we need the else. And for here, we need, again, the predecessor. So we need to use a for loop. And I always use k, which is position one, because it's not there in the very first one. So position zero. So here is less than or equal to the index minus one. Here, just to make sure we go to the position that we indicated is at the very beginning. We're going to move one by one. Again, this method only help us to go our, um, oh, by the way, I'm missing the predecessor. I need to create here a note, a dummy variable called pred, that basically will point to the first. I forgot about that. Here it is. So now we're going to have pred is going to be updated by pred.next. So this loop, in other words, is in charge just to move our predecessor one by one. So what are we going to do now? Once we get to the predecessor.next, right? So we're going to get out of this for loop. That means that we're just about to get the, the value. We're just about to remove the value. First of all, we need to initialize red to get uh, the value of the pred dot next dot value just to make sure we initialize that this is the feedback that we need now we need to reroute after that what does that mean it means that pred dot next is going to get the value of pred dot next dot next okay what is happening right here we need to go to the next available value we just want to remove this index the element from this index so then dot next, it will be the, the value after that. So we the only thing we're doing, the, the guy that is after that thing is going to be connected to pred.next just to make sure we have that connection. And what happened, and this is the same case, what happened if it happens to be that pred.next is equal to the null? That means that we're trying to remove the very last value. Okay, we're going to do the same situation that happened in our previous add method, which is just we need to update our last, which will be now the pred.next. And that's it. So here is we want to make sure we update our last in case it was null, the element after. So and we don't need this line. And now we have this whole remove. Actually, we don't need this curly bracket because we, we only have one one uh, line of code and it looks more elegant and i think that that will do this is this works yeah it works fine and as i mentioned there is a couple of variations of this remove i would like to invite you to read your book or other resources when you instead of having the index you pass a string
It's very similar, but instead of just checking the boundaries, you just need to make sure you find this string. That's where we use the dot compare to or dot equals. Okay, so that's it's, it's an interesting one. I just want you to recognize that part. I just want to talk about a little bit about the collections library. Now, notice that in Java, there is a import java.util. There, there is a collections library. Now, I know this concept. You might found it. You probably found it in your book uh, when we were talking about arrays, right? You probably found array lists. And then now that you're visiting again the chapter on link list, you probably found something called collections. As a matter of fact, it's the next chapter of your book. Now, collection is, is very important for all programmers because this is what we're going to do for the rest of our lives. We're already going to have this access to library called collections where you have plenty of different friends. You have the link list, you have arrays, you have vectors, you have hash tables, you have a lot of different things there. And the, the reason why we have it there is because that is part of the API, which is the library of developers. And here, what we've been doing for the past year is that we've been teaching you some concepts related to how to implement those data structures. So please don't feel, uh, don't feel uh, stressed or mad with us. We, te we teach you how to create this implementations because you never know what your boss is going to ask you later on. You're probably going to have to create a new data structure. It really depends on what are the needs of the computer programming. So I know that you're going to go to this library. It's like, whoa, everything is there. Everything that we've been working is right here. But I, 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 that is not the reason why you took computer science courses. You took computer science courses to learn how to build these data structures. And this is what we're doing. Now, in this library, you're going to talk about link lists and array lists because they have certain methods, uh, common methods that we have that can be used in order to perform certain basic operations. I'm going to talk about that in the next slide. But I want to discuss something about the enhanced loop. The enhanced loop basically helps us to do um, iterations or actually process elements from the list. It can be a link list, it can be an array list, it can be any collection. And later on, we're going to talk about more collections, but basically enhanced loops works with objects. So we're going to start discussing different items like comparable, like that equals, and the enhanced loop basically allows it to iterate through objects, through a collection of objects. It's very similar to the regular for loop that you know for since Java 1 or CS1. But in reality, the enhanced loop basically helps us. It already knows that you need to iterate through the entire process. So it saves you a couple of steps. So let's go ahead and take a look in this methods that we are telling you. So here is the, a couple of the first common linked list methods that we have. The get one basically, it takes an index and it will give you back, it returns a specific index. For example, here is an example. When you have a list and dot get two, it will give you the value 11, which happens to be at position two of the list. Remember, we start at index zero and the value of position two is 11. Similarly, we have something called set. Set basically takes two arguments, the index and the value, the new element that you want to change or exchange. The index is an integer, of course, and has to be in the boundaries between zero and the size. And then the value is basically you're going to exchange that value that is occurring position. Here is an example. Here we're trying to exchange the value at position zero by three. Notice that here we have a, a, an integer. Now, this dialect or this dialogue, what we call it, is, is, a, is a call of creating a new object integer. Notice that this list holds integers. And remember, it's a completely object list, right? So here we need to add objects. In this case, it's a new integers. So we're creating a new instance with the value of three, and we just added at position zero. This is a different way. This is a shortcut in order to create integer x equals new integer. This is the way we basically create it through here. So this is just an example of the cool tricks that you can do in Java. The next one is the adding. So here we have two different types of add. We have the add that you provide just the element. In that case, you're just going to add it to the end of the list. This is what we work in the very first lesson on, on the link list. This is what we implement. But also you can add the index and the element you want to add. This is what we talked today 
about how to create or how to add an element into a specific index. We're providing, or they're providing these two different uh, methods because they want to give you flexibility. This is called polymorphism, and this is method overloading. So you have the loading of two different methods, the one that takes one parameter and the one that takes two parameters. And here are the examples that we were discussing. So here you can have uh, two, two ways you can add it. Here in the very first example, where you're trying to add a new integer seven at the end. And here we add the 14 as well. So here at the very beginning, the list has, it was empty. Now you have seven and now you have seven and 14 because of the second, the second parameter. Now in this, in the other example, for example, this one, the one that is giving you the two indices, you want to add in position zero, a new integer 21. So basically notice that given the list that is not empty anymore, you have seven and 14, you add it in the very beginning position index zero. Also, it might happen you want to add it at position two. So something between seven and 14, now we can add the value nine. And this is what actually we discussed today in today's lesson. Size is another method that basically calculates the total number of elements in the array list or in the linked list. So both in, in both implementations, you have the size and that's very useful. And also the remove, you have two different flavors. The one that you provide the index or you, you provide the existing elements. Either or you will have to navigate through the entire list in order to find those values. I'm going to give a demonstration of those methods by using the collection example. And hopefully this helps to illustrate this whole concept of the collections. So we're going to modify slightly our my linked list tester that we already created by defining a node and create a my linked list where we have all these great methods like add, remove, size, and whatnot. But the reason why I decide to modify this a little bit is because to introduce what we call the java.util collections, okay? For that, I need you to pay extra, extra, extra attention. And as I already mentioned in the lecture, if you import this library, java.util, you probably already know that there's a lot of stuff here. You probably remember this from CS1 when we were doing this in order to get the scanner and get a lot of stuff. You can see here, I'm just using the one that, um, uh, Java code suggests you because this loads everything that you have in this library it gives you this this description. Notice how big this library is. You can get a lot of different things here. You can get the queues, the randoms, the list. Here is our friend scanner, right? We can own a lot. We can use a lot of different things here. It's it's just amazing, right? So we can even just say it include Java that you till everything now. And I want you to pay attention that uh, everything that you can find here, you can use it. As a matter of fact, most likely you will be using um, this, this library for the rest of your life. I know it sounds a little bit crazy, but this is basically what you do as a developer. You use a lot of these libraries just to make your code very quick. Now, notice that here is suggesting me to use something called a list. Okay, so there's a list iterator, there's a lot of different things, there's a link list, which is interesting, yeah. So I'm going to go ahead, you can you can use the wildcard if you want to, or you can just use the link list. Now, this guy, I'm not so sure if you remember, but I told you the reason why I call it my link list, is just to not be confused with the link list that you provide in the library java.util link list. If you, most of you just use the wildcard, which means give me everything that belongs to util, and that is the perfect mistake to Java giving you this problem if you call something the same name. So here, what we're gonna do, we're gonna import the linked list directly. Instead of using my linked list, I'm just gonna use linked list and linked list. Notice that this is the actual, this is the class that I I'm using from the entire uh, demonstration of the linked list. Let's see what we can do and what we cannot do. Notice that the is empty didn't complain. Yeah. Notice that the is empty is not complaining. Here is the first complaint, right? Because here, let's let's pay let's pay attention of this description. Java is telling you, hey, the field first is not visible, and by all means, 
here is when I've been telling you since Java 1 or CS1 that you need to keep your fields private. And perf uh, the perfect uh, example is because here is very critical to get this uh, value. If you modify, if you messed up with these guys, the first and the last, Java can create a lot of problems, a lot of problems. And the value doesn't know, but because here we don't use in the node, Java does it internally. Now, if you want to get the very first one, there's a method, right? Here we can get, you can put here get first. Notice that here is suggesting the get first. We can use it and that will give us the first value. Guess what? If we have a get first, gotta be a get last. Here it is. So here we can use these two guys, and I forgot that some parentheses here, and we can keep adding. Yeah, the add works many times, and then also here we're gonna use also again the first. So we can use here get first, and here get last. Don't forget the semicolon. And then we have the size and there's some more methods. And as a matter of fact, maybe let's go ahead and see the Java library. So if you go to the Java library here, we can just go linkless. And then uh, here is the entire class of the API. And there's a lot of stuff. Here is the constructor, right? And we can actually create a different, different type of constructor. And here's all the methods, right? Here we have the add, we have the add with an index and the element, very similar that when that we implement in this class. There's other like add all, add the first, add last, clear. This basically removes all the elements from the list. Contains is another way to call the find. Yeah, we call it find. Here is contains. The correct name is called contains for collections, but I like to call it find because that gives you this notion of search. We have other stuff like, for example, get. When you provide the index, you're going to get that specific index. We talk about get first and get last. Look all these possible uh, methods that we have in this class. So it's, it's a lot. There's a lot of different functionality that is being provided for you that you can use in these classes. This is a very useful class. And yes, it's inside of the class util. That's why we call it here as in a collection. So collection is a different name for discussion about different data structures, but I don't want to call it data structures because there's different stuff of collections that are not data structures. There are even methodologies and, and other functions that you can use there. But in reality, all function, all collections, they have very similar aspects. Notice that the linked list, they are asking you to implement the regular list. The, the Ike, the clonable, servable, those are the implemented. We're going to talk about those in later classes. In particular, in data structures, we elaborate a little bit more. Eventually, you're going to talk, you're going to take a course called Advanced Object or Inpatient Programming, and this will help you out to, in order to create those data structures. So let's go back to the code. So if I save this program, and I try to compile, guess what? This program will run. Let me just, let me get my terminal here. And let me just go to the desktop and then Java C, my link list tester.java. What you see right here, ladies and gentlemen, is not an error, it's a warning. And here is Java is being very kind, telling you that there is, um, in my link list, you're using an unchecked or unsafe operations. This is a warning. Basically, it's telling you that when you create a link list, this you're not checking or you're just not restricting what kind of objects you want. I'm going to tell you how to get, get rid of those. This whole Angular brackets specify what kind of data type you want to have. Here, we're going to hold strings, as you can see. So it's okay to provide those angular brackets or diamond brackets. I cannot remember. Different books call it differently. So here you're specifying that you're going to hold strings, as you can see. Right? I'm going to save this, and I'm going to clear my screen and compile again. And that error, uh, that warning should go away, as you can see right now. If I call my link list tester, and I will get the same result as I try to do it using my other data structure that I implement. So I just want to let you know that there is this ability, there is this library that you can use wisely, especially when you want to write a lot of code 
and you don't want to spend time on the implementation details. I mean, sometimes you will have to. It depends on the, the task that you want to do. The meanwhile, I just wanted to show you this availability to have this um, library as the java.util that you can be it can be helpful. You know what? Let me just elaborate one more thing. If you just want to print the elements that you can have here, you can use the enhance loop. The enhance loop also helps us to navigate through the entire list or the entire collection by using the following. It's each string s coming from the list. And then what you need to do in the meanwhile is basically print the value s. So here, this is called the enhance loop. And the enhance loop, basically what it's doing is basically what it says here. Give me every string that you get from the list. And what I'm going to do in the meanwhile is just print this guy. Let's just save this and compile again and run it. And this will give us a demonstration of the entire elements that we got. You can notice here we go through all these elements and just by using the enhance loop. I hope this helps. If you have any questions, please let me know. Happy coding.